This is my first example. You've already uh, started to draw this. I'm not going to redraw it because I have it right here. But in addition to that, what I want to do is help us work out the surface area accurately by pulling out the parts of the net that I'm going to need to evaluate. Okay. So let's start with the easy part. There's the base there. There's the rectangular uh, base at the bottom. And it's 10 by 18. Okay. So you can see, I guess I'll call this my 10. And this is my 18. And you can also see on this front sort of face, I have a thinner triangle here. No, I take that back. That's the wider triangle. Over here, I have a thinner triangle. 10 across, 15 up. Okay. So I'm going to label this 10 on the base. It attaches here if I wanted to. And then I've got this height here, which is 15. Are you with me? Follow? In the same way, I've got a wider triangle. This one has a base of 18, and it's going up how far? 13. Yeah. Okay, I've got everything set up, so now I'm going to say total surface area. And I've got it all laid out, so I can say area of a rectangle, 18 by 10. Now, I've talked about this before. I know the triangle formula has a half in it, and you're about to double it, so it's tempting to just not write those at all. But I'd encourage you to write them because the two and the half are meaningful. Okay? They actually tell you what is going on, and they tell me that you know what you're calculating. Okay? So I've got two triangles over here, and it's half base times height. Do you agree? Yeah. Like so. And then I'm going to rehearse it for the final pair. And now, if you want, you could immediately turn to your calculator for this. I'm going to suggest, as much as possible, I don't know if Nathan and Andrew, this is their intention, but um, do what Nathan and Andrew are doing, and if you can, calculate some things in your head. I know you don't have to, but uh, I don't know if you guys know, when astronauts go into space, because up in space, they're not feeling the experience, they're not experiencing gravity, all of their muscles, the muscles you're using right now to sit up under gravity, the muscles I'm using to stand up under gravity, you don't have to use them. Does anyone know what happens to those muscles when you stop using them? They degrade, they go away. We call it, it has a name, it's called atrophy. It's not a pretty thing. Um, astronauts come back to space and if they haven't exercised enough, they, it's so hard for them to actually stand up and their hearts can't even pump their blood up and down. Your brain is exactly the same. Right? So if you look at this and reach for your calculator, that's a bad idea. You are making your brain atrophy. We can all do that without punching any buttons in. That two and that half, we know they're going to combine. And this, again, is just 150. Okay. Uh, 13 by 18. All right, now we're sort of stretching it. I think I've already worked out what mine was. Has someone already got it? 300 and something, right? 324, I'm thinking. Can someone confirm that for me? 234. That might not be that thing. Yeah? No. Yes? No? Yeah. 234? Thank you. And so now you can add them all up. 330, that's going to be 564, right? Yeah. What's the unit? Square. Millimeters squared. You happy with that? Okay. Now, just put your pens down for a second. I'll show you the second example, but I'm going to show it on here, and then I'm going to leave it up so you will be able to catch up in a second. I just want you to watch what's going on because this is tricky. Have a look at the second triangle, pyramid, and see how it differs from the first. How is the second pyramid different? Think for a second. Think, think, think. Okay, Delage, what do you reckon? Uh, there's only one height. Okay, so they've given you, well, you can just count the number of measurements you've got. I've got four over here, I've got three over there. Okay? Significantly, what measurement is that I have over here that I didn't have over here? Yeah, sorry. Um, it's like in the middle of the... Yeah, that's right. It's smack bang from the top and it goes straight down. Okay? In fact, there's something kind of implied there that I want all of you to include. You might maybe... You, you best think? Okay, good. It's the perpendicular height. See these ones? They're kind of leaning over. They're slanted. Okay? Whereas this one's not. So when you draw this diagram, I want you to watch this carefully. Okay? 
When you draw this diagram and drawing it is so important because of what you're about to add onto here. You will need to add some constructions so you can turn this problem into this one. Okay, think about it. For instance, have a look at this, uh, this face over here. Let's choose a better color. See this face over here? Pardon my messy coloring. Okay, so you see it, right? That face over there is like this guy's. Yeah, it's quite <coughs> nice and tall, but you need this height here, except I don't have it. Do you see where it is? It's kind of over here, and I don't, I don't have it in there. So here's what I'm gonna have to need to add into my diagram so I can find out what this height is. Here are the constructions, watch. I'm gonna add in a horizontal line over here. And this is the height I'm after. Now, I know it looks a little bit weird because you've got perspective on this. That doesn't look very right angle-ish, but it is, okay? Now have a look. How am I going to get to this length over here? What information in the diagram can I use to help me? Isabella, what do you think? It's the height the middle and then the length of this side. Yeah, good. So I've got this 16. I don't know what this is just yet, but I can find out very easily. It's, it's half of 60, right? Because as Sarah said, it's right in the middle of the pyramid. So therefore, I can say that's 30 down there. And then you can go ahead and use Pythagoras. Uh, let's see here. 16, 30. If you think about this, there's a common factor between these two, right? What's the common factor between 16 and 30? Two. Is it two? It's two, right? So that's eight, that's 15. Some of you might recognize it's fairly common, again, to see that number there, right? It's like three, four, five, but it's another few along. So now I've got that. What's this pink triangle that I've got here? What's the, uh, what are the dimensions of it? Base of 24, height of 17. Are you okay with that? So you're gonna add those on. In exactly the same way, let's go over here now. You can see I can put a line over here. And you can see I've got the front face. Question? Is the height going to be 34? Oh, yeah, you're right, because I've doubled it. That's right. So let's go back a little bit. I'll put that color back in a second. Good pickup. Now, once you've got that height there, I'm going to do the same thing to work out this front-facing one. Can you see? 16 here, what's this length? Um, uh, 12. Half of 24, which is 12. So you've got 12, 16, if you think about your numbers, I'm pretty sure this is another 3, 4, 5 right angle triangle, right? So I think that makes this one 20. Okay. And you can go ahead and you can do Pythagoras probably to check it out. Now I've got all my numbers. I've turned that pyramid into this one and you can go and do the rest. Okay? Does that make sense? You see how I did it? The 34? Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it long ways for you, just in case you're wondering. Let's call this H for hypotenuse. You okay with that? H squared equals 16 squared plus 30 squared. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. 256 plus 900, 1156. You can go ahead and put the square root button on your calculator. I'm pretty sure it'll give you 30. 